wonderful world of Disney. And now, tonight's program from the wonderful world of Disney, Return of the Big Cat. two brush busters eat, not to mention the cow, a mess of chickens, two grown boys, and of course his grandpa Jubal. Well, how is the old man? Still as spry as a billy goat and twice as ornery. Where did uh, Josh get off to? Well, the last time I see him, he was over to the saloon, speculating. How about this buckskin doll? Ain't nothing much to it. How much you ask him? Two bits? They ain't hardly worth that much. But I guess I'll take it anyhow. Josh, time to go. All I got's 23 cents. I ain't so sure now. Don't look so good without them feathers. Josh, let's go. Coming, Paul. took off on us. I guess they spooked at something back up on the road. It was just an old bobcat, Ma. From the looks of these horses, I should be thankful the two of you were still in one piece. <laughs> Brought you something, Amy.
was very sweet of you, Josh. As soon as you unharness the horses, Josh, walk them a bit, cool them down. All right, Paul. Son, you seen what? He had yellow eyes and a tail six feet long. What are you talking about? He was a big cat, Paul. You sure it was a cat, Leroy? Yes, sir. I seen him plain as plain. Like that grizzly bear you seen on your bed night before last? I told you then I was only dreaming, but this time I ain't, because it's daytime. Honest, Paul, I could take you there and show you his tracks. Well, Paul, Leroy's right. It must have been the cat that spooked the horses. Yeah. Maybe we better have a look, see. Come on, Paul. I'll lead you away. Right down here's where I see him. Here, Paul. Look it. Big cat, all right. No mistake in that three-toed heathen devil. Told you, didn't I, Paul? I thought he was gone for good. Been two years now. But it appears he's come back. What are we gonna do? Well, he's lit out now. I expect he's prowling around somewhere up there in the mountains. Ain't we gonna go get him? Not now, son. Not yet. Paul? What about Amy? I don't want either of you saying one word about this cat in front of your sister. You understand? Not one word. You both know what it would likely do to her. Come on now, let's get back to the house. in the tick on the rock. Did see a flock of geese pass over, but they was out of range of this old greener gun of mine. You missed out I seen them geese, boy? No, sir. Say, does uh, what you're thinking so hard on uh, need saying? The big cat's come back, Grandpa. Leroy's seen him. Showed Paul and me his tracks down by the lake. So, that's it, eh? Well, I should have knowed. The deer ain't been coming into the pasture at first dark like they should. That's bad. That's real bad. I'm gonna get me that cat. Why, boy, that cat'll range over a hundred square miles. You'll need all the patience of a dozen Indians set end to end. Grandpa? What makes that cat? Well, different from most. Well, just happens. Animal turns killer. Nobody can really explain it. I got this burning feeling inside. Telling me I gotta kill him. Well, all us McLaren's got reason to want that cat dead, but you gotta have patience. Uh, wait for the right time. Hold off for now. I can't do that, Grandpa. Well, then you just remember this. That cat and his kind was hunters long before people like us was even on this earth. Now, he ain't gonna take kindly to being hunted himself. Fever hit that territory like lightning striking dynamite. I was uh, panning my workings on, on Blue Creek at the time. Did you get much gold, Grandpa? Took near $80 a day out of that creek. Anyway, I had me this sassy old milk cow named Madeline. Used to let her uh, graze along the bunch of grass next to the stream where I was panning. One day, I noticed she was walking all loppity sided. And uh, I figured she was near birthing. Wasn't that tall. What was it? 
Buster. She'd been drinking from the creek where it was shallower, near the bedrock. Wasn't long after that that she just laid down and expired on me. Sure am sorry, Grandpa. Uh, it got me a team of mules to haul her out of there before, well, she was uh, upwind of my diggings. Them mules couldn't budge her. Tore up half a Claiborne County just to try and. Why was she so heavy? Well, I'm just getting to that. I wanted to find out myself. You know what she had in her belly? No, sir. Gold dust. Yes, sir. Gold dust. Assay down it to $30 an ounce. Golly. Well, sir, dead as she was, I figured I had the richest cow in Claiborne County. Boy, bet you nobody in the whole world tells stories like Grandpa. Well, just remember, Leroy, that's all they are. Stories. You going upstairs, Amy? Oh, I made some green apple pie. Grandpa, what do you think about me seeing that big cat today? I was the only one seeing him. So I heard. Yeah, it reminds me of a dreadful apparition I seen one time up on the carry path near Parker Ridge. You seeing that uh, cat again today reminded me of it. Well, he comes talking at me just about... Grandpa. Amy, Amy, we didn't want you to hear. Two long years since that devil cat frightened Amy and took her voice away. Now he's back.
Amy? Oh, honey, it's all right. Mama's here now. Now, you just try to get some sleep. There's nothing to be afraid of. Everything's going to be all right, darling. <laughs> you just sleep. That's the girl. Everything's going to be all right. Sleep. Sleep. Who was it? Shotgun. Sounds like it came from outside. I bet you was Grandpa Jules. She asked that big cat. Grandpa Jules? Jubal, what is it? Why, that mangy, sneaky-eyed, flea-bitten fox is up and done it again. Run off with our best laying hand, but this time I was ready for it. Got off two shots, Grandpa. How come you missed? Well, I didn't exactly miss him, but I was afraid there'd be feathers flying from here to Humboldt County if I fired into the flock, so I waited till I got away from the coop. It's just that old fox, Amy. Honest. Don't you come here after the chickens. Well, if I'd had my specs with me, Everyone better come inside now before we all catch our death of cold. Come on, Leroy. Time I was off, Safina. Oh, why so early? Old man Leach wants the timber on the north side of the mountain cut far down as a creek before the first snow. He says uh, if we get the job done on time, he'll see to it we get a bonus. Does that mean I get my new stove? Or a new brood mare. John, you know perfectly well this old stove isn't likely to last through the winter. Oh. And besides that, you promised. Well, look at this. Look at this oven door. The hinges squeak. John McLaren. Well, I guess if I made a promise, I'd better stick to her. Have, uh... Have you looked in on Amy this morning? I didn't want to disturb her. She hardly slept a wink last night. John, what are we going to do? I... I guess the good Lord will have to decide on that, Sfina. I'll see you at supper. Mm. That's your digging. A tiger trap. Like I see in Amy's picture book. Oh, well, just make sure you don't catch any tigers. Oh, no, sir. Gonna catch me that old fox. Might even catch me that big cat, too. Well, the way you're going at it, us McLarens might be the only family in the valley sporting two wells. See you this evening, son. Bye, Paul. move away from that window. You can't just stand there and look him into your trap. Morning, 
Josh. Alrighty, huh? I, uh, I brought these for your mom for that floor rug she was talking on. Well, she'll sure appreciate that. Well, I owe her. <laughs> I mean, a sack of flour, a jar of liniment. Who knows what else I might have borrowed from her that slipped my mind. Did you hear about the big cat coming back? Yeah, I come across the carcass of a young deer up the creek a little ways from my place the other day. There ain't no doubt in my mind the big cat's the one that made the kill. Well, did you go after him? Yeah. I tracked him up as far as the ridge line and then I lost him. <laughs> you know, tracking that old cat on his own ground is a little bit like trying to grab a handful of wind. Hmm. Here, uh, let me give you a hand with that. that fox? Come see. He's the biggest, meanest little fox that you nobody ever laid eyes on. You ain't just funny me, are you? Don't believe me? Come see for yourself. Good morning, Mr. Purdy. You come too if you'd like. <laughs> Fox, boy, out there's a dog. A dog? Yeah, it looks to be a wild one, too. You mean an old dog went and wrecked my tiger trap? Seems like. Boy, he sure looks mean. I ain't surprised he's mean all cut up the way he is. Think maybe him and the big cat had at it? Well, I wouldn't be a bit surprised. Well, what kind of dog is he, Hunk? Well, that's pretty hard to tell right off. I mean, don't seem to be any particular kind of breed. I'll guarantee you one thing, though, there's hound in him. Think he might make a good cat dog? I don't see why not. I mean, a hound will track most any critter as long as he's trained proper. Will you help me train him, Hunk? Looks to me like we ought to try and tame him first. Yeah, I think you're right. Sure acts right. You know, it looks to me like that's an awful lot of dog for a little old skag like you to handle. I'll bet you can handle him, Josh. I sure like to try. <laughs> Thanks, Leroy. You know, I might need some help in training them. I'll help you, Josh. We can do it together. First, we got to get him out of there. Yeah, and then Tizzy was hurt. Wait just a minute. Aren't you all getting a little ahead of yourself? You, you sure your mama's going to let you keep this dog? Shoot, she won't mind nothing, will she, Josh? Well, might get a little bulky before she gets used to the idea. Well, uh, I'll leave you two to face up to that. Meantime, we gotta figure out something to use for a muzzle, leastwise, unless we won't get an arm bit off. Hey, you know what? I bet you them rawhide shoelaces be just the thing. What do you think? <laughs> John, have you seen the boys? Not since I got home. Have you seen them, Grandpa? You talking to me, Sphini? Well, I don't see any other grandfather around here. Uh, can't say I have. At least not recent. Something's going on down at that barn, and I think we ought to find out what. Now, Safini. And I have a good notion you know what it is, Grandpa. Well, I, I'd go along with you, but... M my knee's been acting up on me lately. Mm-hmm. Is it your knee or is it your conscience? Well, I'll go along with you. Yeah. Right. Well, it's a dog. Or what's left of one. 
Mom. Cut him in my tiger trap. I gave him to Josh. Foxes will make a good cat dog, Pa. Oh. Cat dog? So that's it. Well, I... I didn't exactly... mean that, Mr. Clarence. John, exactly what do you intend to do about this... this animal? Well, I... Uh, I don't know. I, I'll have to study on it. But that dog's wild. Well, now, it ain't exactly like he was born wild, Miss McLaren. I mean, I figure he was either set free or run off when he's a pup and had to forage for game just so as to eat. What difference does it make how he became wild? Well, maybe none, but then again, maybe a whole lot. Josh wants to try to tame him, Ma. Is that your plan, son? Well, yes, sir. Well... <laughs> huh, with you looking out, I guess we could give him a crack at it. It's clear you all have your minds made up, but there's something I'm going to insist upon. I want that animal to stay tied up in here, and I don't want anyone coming near him except Josh. And if you can't tame him, I want him set free. Well, yes, ma'am. Come on, Leroy. But, Ma, I want... Go on, Leroy. Well... If he's going to stay, I guess we better get him penned up. It's getting a little chilly, John. Would you put another log on? Winter's later than usual, but when she comes, she's going to be a real buster. Yeah. How can you tell? Foxes barking in the woods. Onion skin's thicker than usual. And the field mice is leaving their south doors open. I've been a gabbling when I should have been minded. <laughs> it's your move, Grandpa. Don't take no experts, see that? Well, I ain't finished yet. Let's see now. John. But, Ma, this wouldn't happen if Leroy hadn't have done what he'd done. He's right. You can't hardly blame Josh for Leroy's foolishness. John! Safina, we promised the boy a chance to tame him. But what if that dog had hurt or, or maybe even killed Leroy? Please, Ma, it won't happen again. I'll see to that myself. <sighs> if anything happens to any of the children, I'll hold you personally to blame, John McLaren. <sighs> Son, that dog's full up with hate. I don't want you to go near him or touching him until it's safe. All right, Paul. And one more thing. If you can't tame him by, say, the first black frost, you live up to your end with your ma and set him loose. Don't you worry, Paul. I'll tame him. I hope so, son. 
That's a lot of dog. He sure is. <laughs> Looks like you and me got a whole lot of doing ahead of us. Yes, sir. A whole lot of doing. Morning, huh? Howdy, Josh. How's that there wild dog of yard? Well, that's what I come to see you about. He's near as mean now as when Leroy caught him a week ago. You feeding him good, are you? Well, meat fixings mostly, but I can't get close to him. Got to stand off and throw it at him. Hmm. I'll tell you what, you come over here and give me a hand of these traps, and we'll go take a look at him. All right, huh? All right, now. Go easy with him. Don't rile him none and get in just as close as you can. Hungry? All right, now. Give it to him again. Let him get a real good whiff of it. All right, let's get out of here. But now listen, he's got to learn the lesson he minds his manners. He's going to starve to death. Let's go. this time? It's been here three days now. Hunk says not to give it to you till you friendly it up. So I guess that's just what I gotta do. Ain't like I want to, you know. You reckon he's still out there, Josh? Somewheres. Someday I'm gonna get me that big cat, Leroy. But ain't you scared? Of course I'm scared. That don't change things none. It just ain't right with that cat's done to Amy. I just gotta see to it that it pays for that. Some way. to death for sure. Thought you was gonna jump on me. That a boy. Eat her all up. Beats starving to death, don't it? Easy, boy. Easy. 
I ain't gonna hurt you. Easy, boy. Phew. Hunk was right. You said you'd be coming around in time. Maybe you don't remember living with folks before. Guess they was mean to you. That's why you run off. But now, things are gonna be different. Because now we're gonna be friends. Ain't we, boy? Been thinking of a name for you. How about Boomer? Is that to your liking? <laughs> then Boomer it's gonna be. That's it. Get it, get it. Go on, go get it. Get it. Come on, Boomer. Bring it back here. Come on. Come on, sit, sit. Good boy. No, Boomer, stay. says Boomer's one of the finest prospects for a cat dog he ever laid eyes on. That's why you've been working him so hard. Well, it's something inside me, Paul. And it's just between Boomer and me and that big cat. Man makes his own devil, son. It's not good for anybody, boy or man, to want something that bad. She'll be coming back for him either. Of course, I suspect that somebody knew how to go about it. They could take care of him. All right, let's get him over to the barn. Come on, Boomer. Get up. See to it that run the lot gets its fair share of milk. John, don't forget. Come inside pretty soon, dear. When I consider the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, 
What is man that thou art mindful of him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen and beasts of the field, the fowl of the air and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passeth through the paths of the sea. O oh Lord. Evening, good people. gets hurt, right? That's as far as you're going, old man. Now you just sit yourself again. What do you want? <laughs> Terrible, sorry, Mom. We just want your valuables. We don't have anything of value here. Hear that, Lucas? They've got nothing of value here. <laughs> <laughs> it all depends on your point of view, Mom. Everybody's got ordinaries. Everybody's got valuables, like store-bought goods, things a man can use for trade. Money, whiskey, things of that sort. <laughs> Take the ring you've got on your finger. Won't fetch much, but uh, it'll do for starters. Please, uh, that's my wedding ring. Now, JC, that there is a lady's wedding ring. I won't give it to you. Well, uh, you can either give it to me, or I'll take it from you. I'm was had a stuffed you mealy polecats between a rock and a hard place, I can tell you. Know something? Don't doubt you could have, old man. But right now, you're going to sit like you was told. You leave my grandpa alone! Leroy! Mm, boy, you're just full of dogs. Fuck it. You just go sit yourself over there beside that old man. <laughs> now, Mum, the ring. The ring. Best give it to him, Sveeney. Very smart. Very smart. Never know when I might run into a pretty little thing and want to get married. <laughs> What's the matter, little girl? Can't got your tongue. Don't you talk to her like that. Take what you want and get out of here. Very friendly. Very friendly. Get it. time wearing a hat with that knot I put on his head. What about Boomer? Oh, don't worry. You won't run him no further than the creek. <laughs> yeah. Boy, Paul, you just should have seen Boomer. He was really something. Well, I'm just glad everybody's all right. Appears Boomer really took care of things while we was gone. He sure did. I'm glad we have Boomer's son. So am I, Ma. 
But me and Boomer still got one job left to do. Next week, Josh's nemesis, the dreaded killer, returns and defies his determined efforts to catch it until Providence deals him another chance. Best time I ever had to get that cat is now. You think you can keep up? Sure. All right. But again, the cat takes the upper hand. Join us next time when a desperate search, a killer cougar, and a battle for survival mark the return of the big cat on the wonderful world of Disney.